Hello everybody. Welcome to the first of these short devotional thoughts which we're hoping to distribute a couple of times a week during this period where we are confined to our homes and unable to meet together to worship. I'm hoping a number of people from within the church community will be able to contribute to these over the course of the next few weeks. And if you'd like to be involved, in any way with that, please do let me know. For today's thought, I'm going to read a few verses from the second letter of Peter. This is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you a creature of habit? Some of us have very definite routines which we've planned out carefully in order to make life work. Others of us might think of ourselves as more spontaneous, but in reality I suspect all of us have patterns of doing things that we fall into without thinking. And one of the hardest things about the current lockdown is that those routines and habits have to change. Suddenly we find ourselves in a place where we cannot continue as normal. If you think about how hard it can be to change a particular pattern of behaviour even when you want to, it's no surprise that we feel bewildered when we suddenly have to make so many changes all at once and unwillingly. There is evidence that the brain will adjust quicker than we might think and that the patterns of living that we're being forced into will become the new normal. The immediate psychological shock will recede even if we remain conscious that we really wish things were different. That this happens so quickly means we have to be conscious right from the start of ensuring our new routines include all those things which are most essential to who we are. Or we risk finding ourselves in a couple of weeks having unthinkingly developed new habits which are not helpful. To give an example, back in November I joined the gym. That is not something I naturally enjoy. But I know it's helpful to my health. And so I've established a routine where, at least three days a week, more if I can, after lunch I walk to the leisure centre for a 30 to 40 minute workout and then I walk home again. Now the leisure centre is closed and I'm largely required to stay home. I need to think again about how I replicate that exercise in my new routines. But it's more than that, because as part of my routine, 
I developed the habit of spending my time on the treadmill praying for my church family, listening to the Bible on my phone and reading theology books on the Kindle app built into the gym machines. Now my gym time is gone, if I'm not careful, all those things could go too. So I have to make sure not just to build the exercise into my new day, but also the spiritual practices which have gone alongside it. That's my example. But I suspect most of us can find similar things in our own lives. Maybe you used to read the Bible on the bus on the way to work or listen to it while driving. When are you going to do that now? You used to meet with some others for a prayer triplet or a prayer group. How are you going to build in alternative times for prayer? Your house group isn't meeting. What resources can you find to provide you with encouragement in your faith? You're no longer able to get out and about with friends. Are there other ways you can reach out to them to continue to show a loving, active faith? For some of us, that will be easier than others. If, like us, you've suddenly had to become a quasi school teacher overnight on top of everything else you're doing, or you're working extra long hours in the hospital, the thought of finding time to add extra things into the routine may be daunting in the extreme. We have to be realistic with ourselves. And that's why even a brief encouraging text or WhatsApp message can be so valuable at these times. But if we don't make a conscious decision to nurture and express our faith in this new normal, we can't assume it will happen of its own accord. Peter writes, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. And to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. These are things we have to consciously seek, to work on until they become habitual, part of who we are. But Peter also encourages us. His divine power, he says, has given us everything we need for a godly life. Important though our conscious decisions are, they are strengthened and empowered by the work of the Holy Spirit within us. Without that spirit, however much effort we put in, we could make little progress on changing our character. With the spirit. As we seek to add to our faith, God's power at work in us enables us to grow and develop into the people of love that he has called us to be in Jesus. Over the next few days, as new habits and routines begin to be embedded in our lives, let us be conscious of the place of Jesus within those. That we might find new ways to be effective and productive in our faith. And so to grow together in love. Amen.